Hello everybody. This is a video walkthrough of the Lionheart Creations Piper Pacer Super Pack. This will show you a lot of the features that this aircraft has. The various interiors, the various exteriors, paint schemes, the various models. It's a very large pack of aircraft. It has 37 different paint scheme variants. Some of them include different types of interiors. Some of them range from the early classic original version of the Piper Pacer, Super Pacer, to um, modern day retrofitted uh, Bush aircraft. It also features um, various float planes of those platforms and it also features um, the Tri Pacer um, series. So let's get with it. One of the first things I'd like to cover and we'll start with the original early version model of the Piper Pacer. This is the first platform. Now first off she's been modified from 145 horsepower engine to 160 horsepower engine. So she's going to fly slightly faster than the old originals, the originals that are straight out of the factory. A lot of people put larger engines in them and this is what this is depicting in this package by Lionheart Creations is a slightly modified base version for their classic series. And we'll start off with the detail. As you can see on the wings, um, the wings are 3D modeled with the fabric ribbing. You can just see up there, I'll get rid of that, you can just see up there the, um, the way the ribbing is. It's all three-dimensional. You see nice little curved dips between all the wooden ribs. There's wooden, wooden wings and um, they were covered with cloth and so this model depicts those. You had, <coughs> excuse me, sheet metal covers over the fuel tanks, the upper wing tanks and you would, uh, that gave you access to the tanks in case they started to leak or something or they needed to be replaced. You take those uh, panels off and you could um, take the tanks out, repair them replace them, retrofit them, put in larger tanks, etc. And uh, let's see all the, you see little neat riggings on the uh, flight controls and those are all replicated in the model. You notice the little tail wheel has all of its springs and linkages and levers working. The um, this little slot here in the fuselage just ahead of the um, elevator the leading edge of the elevator, you'll notice that that is part of your wing trim. And if I adjust the trim for down trim, you'll notice that it, the uh, entire front surface of the elevator moves up. And if I give her down trim, that it also will travel, um, no, I'm sorry, up trim. The elevator, the entire elevator assembly travels uh, downward on that slot. And that's how they, uh, they trim the aircraft for up and down was um, they moved that entire front elevator surface. So that's been replicated in the aircraft as well. So this one features uh, flaps and everything is nicely detailed. Another neat feature on the exterior is um, you'll notice that all of the all the little uh, hardware, all the little screws and fasteners and bits are uh, 3D modeled. And the neat part about that is that whenever you're doing aircraft repaints, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about adding in your own textures for screws and counting them and so on. They're already done in the aircraft, so whenever you paint it, you don't have to worry about hardware and stuff in the uh, in the aircraft that's going to be all done for you. Um, another neat feature is um, you have some really, you can't really see them, but they're super high detail brakes and little vent hoses on the bottom, I mean, little aged exhaust pipe, high detail propeller, a little bit of fuel leakage here on the, um, that's your fuel tester valve. Um, 
little hinges here, three-dimensional hinges across the top of the cowling, um, little decals and details and stuff on your antennas, the uh, landing lights here, can't really, yeah, I can barely see it, has some neat little grunge and, and shading and stuff going on inside of there, not too grungy, but, uh, and this version of aircraft is a, a nicer version. The, there's several paint schemes, many paint schemes in this aircraft package, and some of them show a lot of aircraft wear, and some of them do not. Some of them are really nice, well taken care of aircraft packages, aircraft paint schemes. With the classic Piper Pacer package, the one that we're looking at now, you'll notice that she has uh, wheel wheel skirts on, and um, a lot of people don't like wheel skirts. A lot of people do like wheel skirts, and a lot of people like particular types of wheel skirts. So in this aircraft package, and I'm the same way, and since I get to design and say what's going to be in the aircraft, I, I wanted all three. <clears throat> so what I did was I, I made a system to where if you go inside the aircraft, there is a uh, skirt selector switch, and you can flip that, and on the outside you'll notice we have the old classic wheel skirts, and um, we go inside, and flip that and you'll notice now we have um, a sort of a modern era or newer model wheel skirt and uh, these are pretty much the type that were also on the tri-pacer nicely modeled have that neat little curvature thing underneath the, the skirt opening they hug the tires well have that neat little cut off angle and then if we hit that switch again we go outside now we have no skirts which is how you usually see a Piper Pacer is um, a lot of times um, if it's not really decked out and restored she'll have the skirts off she won't usually always have skirts so and I think it looks really neat you know it gives the uh, aircraft a nice rugged look you know like a Piper J3 you never see Piper J3s with wheel skirts and these were a nice little rugged airplane and featured the same sort of um, uh, appearance. They were rugged. They were a nice plane that you could land out in a field. And, and um, Anyway, let's go back to those uh, early skirts. I want to show you something here. These are kind of neat in that um, first off they have a neat little um, vintage chrome strip on there and you don't have to worry about that when you repaint the aircraft the um, the uh, trim piece is separate from the paint and uh, anyway the um, the skirts you'll notice that they don't really hug the tires but instead they have a, a lot of area around them well what they basically were back then in those days were a uh, rock guard sort of um, kept mud and rocks and debris from shooting up from the tires into the fabric of the wings and damaging them yeah, also kind of guarding the uh, elevators S a lot of people landed on dirt strips back then in fields so such a tire that gave uh, or such a skirt that gave the tires a lot of room wouldn't get clogged up with mud and basically their job was just to protect the aircraft and so that's what these skirts are that's why they're so big is um, basically they were for like rocks and mud Let's go ahead and check out the various interiors of the classic Piper Pacer um, package. As you'll notice, um, this one has it's a uh, version of the um, panel that was seen a lot of times in the uh, Piper Tri Pacer. It, of the uh, Tri Pacers back then in the 50s and early 60s, this double panel. Um, assembly became popular and so you'll see a lot of these at the airports and so this is one of the versions that we have in the package and works excellent with the uh, with the tri-pacer uh, this is depicting a, a version of the pipe the, the super pacer with this version of instrument panel so and it's a, a nice panel as well let me show you something and let me show you a little view here of the instrument panel 
it shows you that everything is pretty much three-dimensional it's not so much uh, painted in into the surface for the shading and stuff you have actual three-dimensional basils that are you know this is a like a vanity cover over the instruments that kind of hide all the edges and screws and stuff and so um, it's actually all nicely curved nice beveled edges and um, even the screws are three-dimensional for what screws that it does have all little 3d knobs everything's everything's very three-dimensional on the aircraft these are some of the interior views this is your um, trim this trim will actually move the entire amount of travel that it should on the aircraft the guys that helped me design this they all are former owners of uh, vintage Piper Pacers so I had to get everything exact um, to their liking so that's a, a shot of the interior this is neat this shows all the these are clickable lights this these will illuminate your instrument panel and this will illuminate the interior of the aircraft at night and give it a good glow inside This is a 2D panel. Now on these on these Piper Pacers throughout all the package, the the boys strongly twisted my arm into having 2D panels. Most companies don't offer them, and uh, on this one I've put in 2D panels, and they're going to be in flat black. So if you have a virtual cockpit that has colored instrument panels, like let's say. Uh, white covers with a red background, something like that. And you go to the you go to the uh, 2D panel mode. It's not going to be color. Also, it's going to be black. It's going to be crinkle black. All of the 2D panels are crinkle black. That's to let you know. Otherwise, we would have so many versions of of 2D panels. The package would would be massive. We have to cut corners somewhere. Um, let's see, let's kind of walk you through, well, let me show you another design of um, another version of the uh, instrument panel before we go on. This is a version of um, one of those two tones that I told you about. This one's sort of a, a cream color on the um, uh, like vanity instrument panel covers and it has um, red on the uh, actual instrument panel face and some white font on your switches down below. <clears throat> it's kind of neat. It um, matches the the, the um, flight controls white color on the um, yokes and also the knobs. They were all sort of that uh, neat cream color. This is another version of the many various instrument panels that are in the, the um, standard platform Piper Pacer. This was one of the earliest panel designs that they had and as you can see it too is also uh, it has like a lot of curvature and and beveled areas in it and uh, you'll notice it has like a glove box on one side and um, and the bulk of the instrument panel faces off to the other side and then uh, it has like a blue background and this this is for the uh, little blue aircraft it's like a sort of a 1950s Bel Air color back when the 57 Chevys were popular with this color 1950s Chevys um, anyway uh, this this shows you um, you know one of the different variants it, the, it's a lot of different panels and interiors in this aircraft package this is an interior that's it's pretty roughed up it's just got a lot of stains you can see a lot of stains in the fabric and and so that's kind of a neat thing you know all these different aircraft to choose from select from they're all in different states like this one she needs to be repainted on her instrument panels got a lot of like chips and scratches in it so that's another version of uh, interior and here is still yet another now this one is just like the um, version of instrument panel that we just looked at 
except all in flat black. I really like this. This, uh, this kind of looks normal to me. But anyway, um, all the switches on this particular panel are labeled. Not all of them are. And um, this is this is that glove box. And you'll notice that I've mounted radios on top of the glove box, and that is because the earliest versions of Piper Pacers didn't have radios. So what I've done is I mounted them. I could have mounted them in the glove box, and you would have to open this glove box. But there's some problems with that because the glove box would tap the uh, yoke. You have to pull the yoke back to open this little door. And so I didn't want to have to do that and have it go through the uh, three-dimensional yoke. It won't just hit it and you have to pull back in the flight simulator. It's, it's not that realistic. So what I did instead was um, I made this uh, glove box clickable. And if you like the old way, if you don't like seeing your instruments, if you actually had a piper from back in these old days, you can click that and it hides the radios and puts a little... Uh, uh, doorknob pull handle there, pull knob, you click it again and you get your radios back, you can tune in your frequencies and rehide them. Down here by your left knee is the uh, ADF instrument, I've included that, help navigate, that was one of their neat high-tech navigational instruments uh, back then, radios. Um, on the instrument panel I put a um, semi-modern Piper Pacer fuel tank uh, uh, fuel gauge in there. And so the um, vintage ones didn't, I think that they actually had uh, fuel fuel level um, readouts up here and so you would um, you would go up here for your uh, readouts of your fuel tank levels but I wanted one mounted in the panel. I think that looks a lot better. And this is the infamous dual oil pressure, oil temperature, piper gauge um, right there. And you'll notice these all have that radium World War II ink uh, appearance on the gauges or they're vintage from that era. This is the outside of that aircraft that has that flat black interior panel. I just wanted to show you. This is one of the versions of um, pipers that, that give you a really nice um, uh, newness to it. it it's been restored um, it's got a custom uh, paint scheme on it and it's really been babied and taken care of so you can see there's there's no chip paint there's no bugs on it it's just a really clean aircraft and it looks really good with the modern wheel skirts there we go that looks pretty sharp. I like that. So, you, you know, this goes to show you, you know, you have so many different types of Piper Pacers. Just a classic package alone from beat up, weathered, untaken care of aircraft to very um, beautiful, restored, uh, babied, cherished Piper Pacers that have been just totally redone, you know, featuring neat little wheel skirts and new fonts on the uh, on the cowling and it's just uh, you know it's neat to have a lot of oh what would you call it um, additions or uh, features for the aircraft you get a lot for your money okay so now what I'd like to show you in this um, massive aircraft package is the bush plane version of the super pacer what this is is a modified <coughs> modern day um, version of what you would find in an aircraft that's doing uh, bush plane runs in uh, Alaska uh, in the territories of the mountain territories of Canada this would be a, a, a really nice modified um, Piper pacer she has a 180 horsepower engine. She has um, these little on the leading edge of the wings. You can see that it's been uh, fitted with um, Vortis. Uh, I don't know if they're called Vortis generators. What they do is they dirty up the wind as it goes across the top of the wing and it adds drag. 
and what that does is it produces an increased amount of um, lift and so the aircraft is then able to fly at slightly slower speeds when coming in on approaches um, your uh, stall speed is going to be lowered somewhat slightly every little bit counts another thing is um, she's equipped with big tundra tires and you'll notice they appear to be sitting in the ground and what it is is they're not fully inflated so it they're sort of sitting they have a big flat spot in the tire where it's on the ground because it's not it doesn't have a high amount of pressure in the tires and that's so that it can it can uh, drive over rocks and things and it won't f flip the airplane up in the air it'll it'll just ride over the uh, various rocks and stuff um, that's a couple of features on the exterior let's go inside and I'll show you the instrument panel and as you can see this one's been fitted with a, um, a modern day panel they've gone to one of those companies that that um, uh, uh, create instrument panels for aircraft modern day you know vintage aircraft and so it's been retrofitted with uh, modern day um, uh, instrumentation um, she still has the uh, those versions of radios that were in the other aircraft but your instruments are all updated to really nice new versions um, I don't think I showed you this on the other one other, on the other versions of Pipers but you see how your yokes kind of block some of the um, switches and knobs and things well if you click this bearing carrier the bearing that carries the shaft for the yokes if you click those it'll hide your yokes so you can get those out of the way you can go through your startup sequences flipping on your switches and powering out and then you can bring these back out and you'll have those in your view and you'll be able to um, you know have a nice little realistic flight and flight simulator uh, so anyway um, now one of the things that wanted to point out on the Piper Piper Pacer package is um, on the uh, on this version with a modern panel the aircraft has a uh, battery and avionics switch okay now let me show you the other version of panel now here we have um, the uh, tripacer style panel and you'll notice that there is no avionics <coughs> excuse me there's no avionics or battery switch all you have is your um, lights uh, your dome light your panel switch um, and that's it carburetor heat uh, skirt selector and that's it so the only way that you powered down the battery in the avionics back then in a classic Piper Pacer was you turned off the ignition switch. It's the same as a car. In cars today, even today, here in the future, we do not have switches for your cruise control, which is like a form of autopilot. We do not have switches for your radio system, DVD, and all that. Everything's tied into just your ignition switch, and that's the way it was with the Piper Pacers back in the old days. So now, if you were to use a pre-made, cold and dark state, unrunning aircraft save point that you created with another aircraft, and you purchased the Piper Pacer, and you went into that saved cold and dark state with the other plane, and switched into the Piper Pacer... 10 to 1, I'll bet you a dollar, you won't be able to start this because this has no avionics or battery switch in it. And so what you need to do to get around that, because this doesn't have those switches, so you wouldn't be able to turn on those systems because they would be off in that saved file. So what you do is you start off in the Piper Pacer with the package running, with the aircraft running, and then you create your cold and dark state turn off all your switches and things and then <clears throat> save that flight there as you're cold and dark and that way you're not going to have problems starting up the aircraft because you will otherwise um, another couple of neat features I wanted to show you on on both the classics and the bush plane is um, this this thing this uh, knob that's hanging down underneath the um, 
underneath the uh, instrument panel. That is your parking brake. It's actually a handbrake. And uh, on the earliest versions of Piper Pacer, you didn't have tow brakes. You can see this aircraft version does have tow brakes. They all have tow brakes. But in the earliest models of um, the actual Piper Pacers, they had no tow brakes. You just had uh, regular pedals. And you use this to brake the aircraft, to apply brakes, that is. And um, so you would, as you were landing and you're on the runway and you're slowing down, you pull back on this and that helps you to slow down. That is your brakes. And you had no steering control aside from your rudder. So you'd rev up your engine, apply rudder, and that would steer you. And then you, um, and then you would apply this. But you don't have to worry about that in, in this uh, flight simulator package. All the aircraft use uh, the tail wheel or in the tri-pacer you would use a nose wheel. I wanted to uh, inform you about that. All right, continuing on with the um, walkthrough on the Bush planes of the Piper series, I just wanted to show you uh, one of the versions of um, radically used uh, paint schemes that the package comes with. This is a version of um, aircraft uh, that I believe I had seen um, online whenever I was um, researching the aircraft before I made them. And uh, anyway, this one shows uh, a lot of planes that you see up in Alaska have a lot of wear and tear. And on this particular version, it has a primer colored uh, cowling part. And uh, you'll notice also a lot of the planes that, um, that are flying at the time of, um, like let's say it's thawing out it's uh, it's coming towards the end of winter. It's it's um, coming into spring, and uh, so they are landing in a lot of riverbeds. And um, you'll see that this one has just a ton of looks like uh, muddy water sprayed up onto the fuselage and wings. So you've got a lot of uh, like it's not like chunks of mud, but more like uh, just uh, water muddy water spray, a lot of like um, oil dripping down, a lot of chipping going on on the cowling, um, bug splats, you got a lot of, oh, let's see, oops, you got a lot of um, bug splats of various sizes going on, and you've got honeybees, you've got um, butterflies and gigantic mosquitoes, and it's just seen better days, even on the wings you got a lot of uh, bug splats. A little streaking going on on the wings and stuff. Um, must have been butterfly season. Don't know. But uh, that kind of shows you how radically different some of these planes are. Some of them are very well taken care of, shiny, perfect condition paint schemes. And some of them are just so bad and they have panels that are needing to be um, painted and they, they need to be washed. There's paint fading you can start to see the base color of the paint scheme through the numbers so it's kind of a neat thing uh, same with the interior on this one uh, as you can see it's an early classic it has the old panel and this panel is just so chipped up it's got scuffs and, and marks from the fingers constantly rubbing on the paint to actual chips and paints just you know, it's been on there for 40, 50 years, and it's just, it's chipping off. And uh, Interior, actually, interior in this one is not too bad. Some of these can be really rough. This is another neat feature I'd like to show you. Um, on these aircraft, a lot of people like to play, uh, play. <clears throat> they like to, um, oh, how would you say, with like uh, bush flying, you like to run cargo, fly cargo. And so I kind of like that myself. And so I wanted to include a version where you could load your, your Piper Pacer up with cargo. So if, if you notice there's like a, a wallet on the seat, click that. you click that and um, your plane fills up with cargo. Got some old Land Rover parts and airmail, apples and books and some 
care a care package and so that's kind of a neat thing to get rid of the cargo you click it again oh, that's that's a nice feature here's another neat feature for these aircraft that I wanted to put into the um, planes and um, and I'll, I'll kind of fill you in on why I did all of this um, you'll notice that the, uh, the windows have a little bit of reflection you can see like uh, a little bit of the instrument panel on you know normal like interior window reflections that you would have by the way these these windows open there were several versions of uh, windows that um, that the aircraft came with um, one had like a little flip open vent and it caused ram air to come in through the little vent and it would it would keep you cool and that was that was nice and then they had uh, other versions I think one was just all sealed up I think some versions popped open from the bottom and then there was the slider version and that's the version that I went with on these aircraft and to open them all you do is you you mouse grab it and slide it open it has a neat little handle that's been glued on plexi grip handle that's glued on there anyway but um, now on this on this window right here you can kind of see that uh, there's a, quite a difference between being able to see outside and and with this plexi here and and it's like that in reality if you get in your car and you roll the window halfway down you'll notice that there's a lot of reflection and discoloration that goes on not so much discoloration but a lot of reflections and light coming off of the the plexi and this is being filmed in prepar 3d and they have really nice shading and stuff that occurs even on plexi you'll notice that there's a shadow on the plexiglass from the sunlight you know and in the shade of the um, interior at the ceiling so you can you can see that you know prepar 3d they they replicate that pretty well but you also see that the um that the glass is not super transparent well <clears throat> I used to get a lot of complaints from people that the plexiglass on the inside was too dark or too too visible and then other people claim that you know with uh, so I would I would make the the plexi more visible so people would complain well now it looks like it has no windows in the inside because it's too invisible and it's like you can't you can't win so you just have to choose a direction and go with it. Anyway, um, on this aircraft, what I wanted was to have a normal wear and tear, grungy. You can see the little discolorations around the edges. And um, so I, I put that in. It's faint. And there's not a lot of um, reflections going on. It's, it's, it's a happy sort of balance between visible reflections and non-visible reflections. And if you looked really carefully, you could see that there's, you can't really see it with this blue sky, but there's little bug splats and things going on in the, um, in the windows. You can just barely see those. And uh, anyway, so what I wanted was to be able to have dirty plexi and clean plexi and regular wear and tear plexi. And so what you have is um, I created a system where you could either click on the windscreen it was originally where you had to click on this little pink bottle of plexi cleaner and it would change your windows and I added the clickability of the front windscreen as well so you, you you click one of those two one time and it goes from the default regular plexi to a really dirty grungy bush plane plexi you've got big bee splats and butterfly splats and giant mosquitoes and all different kinds of bugs you got a little bit of grease streaking up um, you know evidently an oil a lot of oil shot out the, the cowling and it hit the windshield and it's slowly dripping up the uh, windshield the, the plexi from you know uh, the wind and so you have this really grungy dirty plexi and then if you click it again you have almost invisible you can still see just a tiny bit of reflection but uh, you still have this and this might be a prepar 3d thing the visible plexi but um, you can still see just a very minute amount of, of reflection built into the plexi 
and so I wanted to show you that and continuing on with the walkthrough on the uh, bush plane versions of the uh, Piper Pacers I wanted to show you some of the um, paint schemes um, this is uh, one that has a, a custom modern paint scheme and it uh, it has a uh, <clears throat> the modern layout of the of the uh, of a custom instrument panel but not in carbon fiber this one's in flat black it's uh, aluminum and this one has an early vintage stock red and white cloth interior this one is uh, a paint scheme and or uh, airframe version of bush plane that's it's this is um this is a baby that isn't quite fully modernized and has uh, an old version um, like Tri-Pacer era instrument panel all in flat black and this one's been cared for the um, the exterior you'll see isn't like covered with bugs she's uh, she's not chipped up she's well taken care of the paint scheme is excellent and the uh, instrument panel, there's no chips in it, no scratches. She's in really nice shape. She's been babied. She's been well taken care of. Oh, by the way, this is a neat feature. If um, if you like um, the old, the the early uh, Piper Pacers had an air horn uh, Venturi thing on the sides, and um, if you like those things you can click this hidden there's a hidden switch in this microphone headphone jack you click that and go outside and you now have that neat little uh, air airflow venturi gadget gizmo i don't know the full story on those i was told they were an auxiliary airspeed indicator um and but these have uh, uh pitot tubes up here so i really don't know exactly what they are it doesn't sound very professional of me i know but um but i like to have the the option of having those so if you like them if you won't, used to own a piper pacer and it and it had that you can turn it on you can make it active so that's a neat little thing you just click on this end head, headphone uh, jack and that will show up and here is still yet another one of the bush paint schemes and on this one you can see that um, it's pretty much chipped up it's got a, a new paint scheme this is one of the actual paint schemes I was that I found online um, that's out there and uh, I liked it it looks actually like it was painted in the 1970s from the selections of colors there but um, anyway so she's got a lot of chippage and she's she has bugs bug splats and uh, but she's not too dirty she still has some uh, she, she's landed in a couple of riverbeds and um, sprayed up some mud on the wings the, uh, the fuselage is still pretty clean and uh, on the inside it has um, uh, brown and, and cream colored uh, cloth interior this one's been retrofitted with a carbon fiber instrument panel and so she's, she's, uh, she's looking pretty good and um, that's that one. And uh, what I think I'll do now is show you the uh, Piper Tri Pacers. And here we are with the um, Piper Tri Pacer. And basically, it's it's nearly an identical airframe to the uh, classic platform, except that uh, they have like a a flat scoop um, a oil cooler in the front of the cowling and they have a, a larger scoop below that and I believe what that did was it uh, acted as like um, a cover for the added framework the early version Piper Pacers that had that were tail draggers they only had a, uh, a frame in the front that held the engine an engine mount frame with a tricycle landing gear you have to have a framework inside that cowling that will carry the suspension and support the the nose wheel so i believe that's probably what that that scoop was also probably doing was uh, acting as a cover for some of the uh, suspension 
stuff and framework that was underneath that cowling. Anyway, so that's one of the paint schemes of the tri-pacers. The tri-pacers uh, all have sort of the uh, vintage um, factory looking uh, paint schemes and um, neat little planes. Everything functions on them. This one's this one is a, a nicer paint scheme. You can see the uh, the wings are glossy. You can see some reflections going on. Uh, the um, the paint is not chipped. It's it's all very clean. It's been well taken care of. And with the um, with the uh, tri pacers, a lot of tri pacers that are excellently um, restored, they'll have uh, the uh, factory wheel skirts on them. They they had factory skirts so let's just go inside and we'll flip that skirt selector you'll notice that the bush planes do not have a skirt selector and that's because they didn't have skirts that big for those giant tundra tires we'll go back outside and now we have some really nice wheel skirts and you'll notice that um the front wheel skirt isn't pointed like the uh the back main gear wheel skirts and that is because that propeller came really close to the uh, to the front of that wheel skirt, and so they um, they rounded them off on the on the nose skirt, so that uh, it didn't come too close to the prop. You hit a big bump, and that that skirt comes up, and it's right next to the prop disc. You don't want anything bad to happen to to that. So so that's why that is shaped the way that it is. And uh, so anyway, that is the Piper Pacer. And uh, show you a couple of different paint schemes on that. This was a neat version. It's, uh, I've seen them on brochures, and I've seen a couple of um, actual planes and photos with this color. And it's hard to describe. It's sort of like um, a bronze or a, a brown, sort of a coppery dull brown. But uh, it was a factory color, and so I wanted it, and I added it into the fleet. The interior on this particular model also carries the uh, colors into the fabrics. And uh, on this particular one, the um, this instrument panel has seen better days. It's just chipped up, scratched, and everything bad has happened to that paint. You can see how bad the chipping is going on, and, and it's just a lot of wear and tear. It's kind of neat, you know, you can jump into some of these and they really just, uh, the um, paint schemes can really put an entire feeling or theme into the aircraft. So it's like the paint scheme almost gives you a completely different aircraft compared to some of the other ones. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, anyway, that's that one. This is that Bel Air color. This paint scheme is in this series as well. I've already walked you through this earlier in the video. So the interior is also matched to the to the outside. And this is one of the custom paint schemes, like a modern day paint scheme. Um, and I've already shown you this one as well. But uh, it comes with this one too. And, um, let's, oh, yeah, I can't, uh, on this one, we can't actually put skirts on it because it has a modernistic uh, panel. It has a, a retrofitted modern day panel on it, carbon fiber, and they don't have the um, the, the switch for the the skirt selectors. So I'm afraid we have to leave that out. That's too bad. I hate it when I have a limitation on one of the models. Neat little uh, modern day font for Super Pacer on the tail. It's kind of neat. I don't know if you noticed. Um, the uh, doors on a Piper Pacer, if you had the uh, the back seat and you had a, a you had the rear door, you'll notice that you only had a, a one door per seat row. So the uh, the front seats had a a door on the right hand side, and the back seats had the door on the left hand side. So that was kind of wild. A little. Neat little detail about Pipers today, even today, Pipers mostly have just a single door on the right hand side also. Something they seem to have always been doing. 
And lastly, we have the um, float plane version of the Super Pacer package. And basically, all the uh, airframes, your bush plane, the original classics like this, the um, uh, tri pacer version uh, instrument panel uh, variants will all have a, a float plane version and so you you'll get a neat set of uh, floats you can see here they're they're really nicely high detailed um, three-dimensional parts on them they're not just all paint uh, it's it's got some neat bump mapping and and it even comes with algae yes green algae so um, you need to know that when you boot up into the um, find the panel when you boot up into the float plane and this is only on the float planes that you'll see this you have a chrome ring and it's attached to some uh, wire cable and so what you do is you uh, you would reach down and you would you would click that and that will lower that will lower your rudders down into the water and when you uh, oops sorry when you pull that back up and it's locked upwards think of that as like a landing gear up is up and down is down your water rudders are down when the ring is on the floor when the water rudders water rudders are retracted up uh, this ring is up and um, that keeps you from uh, if your water rudders are down when you land in flight simulator you flip your aircraft forward you wreck it's not good and it it can happen in the in the real world um, those water rudders are a lot of drag at high speed and they'll they can wreck your plane it'll flip you over so you want to have those up when you're landing and taking off when you're flying you want them up also when you land and you're taxiing around you lower them so that you can turn your aircraft uh, kind of a neat thing about this is um, you can uh, you can see that all the the linkages work all the you know the cables all the they shouldn't be dipping down underwater like that it's part of the side effects of a uh, flight simulator there's no way to adjust that but um, anyway uh, all that all that linkage stuff works it's kind of neat so how about we just take off? You'll notice that um, the pilots don't appear when the aircraft isn't running. And when you start up the aircraft, they they do show up. All right, let's go ahead and do a startup. And uh, this will be the first one, I believe, in the video that, um, that uh, shows you how to start up the um, uh, Piper Pacer. Basically, I've, I've hidden the yokes. Remember that uh, you click this little bearing carrier on the control yokes that hides them. And uh, you'll notice also, if you remember correctly, the um, classics will not have an avionics or battery switch. Everything's done by the um, switch, the uh, main ignition switch. And also to, to turn on your radios, you would turn them on at the units so you would turn everything on there so we can go ahead and turn those on if we want uh, we've got full mixture and let's give her a little bit of fuel let's give her some primer let's go ahead and start her up clear prop now we have uh, we have our water rudder up which is correct and let's give her one notch of flaps. Your flap handle is down here. Let's go one notch of flaps. Think of it as an emergency brake. Your flaps kind of slow you down, so if that's up a little bit, you know that your um, flaps are active. And let's go ahead and take off. You'll notice that uh, the pilot has appeared since we started the engine. And um, 
that happens uh, it's part of the special effects of the package your pilot is um, visible only when the engine's running you'll notice he's got like an old shirt on a lot of the shirts on the pilots are from uh, the 1950s I found some photos of Tish of uh, men's shirts rather that um, are from back in that era so a lot of the guys are, are dressed up like they're from back in the early days and kind of puts you back into the the time element of the aircraft anyway let's go ahead and take off now when we take off on a float plane in case in case you don't know you want to raise your airspeed up until the floats until the aircraft is up on the first step when it's on the first step you can then rotate the nose upwards you have room for it in the back of the um, floats because they'll be up off the water so uh, that's good to know huh Oops. flaps up it's a beautiful day for a flight in Hope Alaska so all the different variants that I have shown you most of those will be available for your float plane version and so that is basically the float aircraft not nothing much to it it's basically just a different form of landing gear here's another shot of the floats kind of shows you um, a lot of the detail of of these things you'll notice that the, um, the linkages all all function and you know, your water rudders are animated things of that nature the um, these caps these were um, like uh, cavity um, there's cavities inside of these floats so if you if you land too hard or you hit a, a rock that's just under the surface and you damage one of the floats and it starts leaking It'll only leak in the areas that are broken, so all the other cells will stay sealed. But as you continue to, to land and you have rough landings, some of the uh, areas of these floats will form leaks. And so they have these big access caps, and you would pop them off and lick inside. And if they have bilge water build up, you put a uh, little um, water pump down in there, and you pump the water out. So you would, uh, when your pump, when your when your floats are starting to, um, you know, look like they're uh, low in the water, you would uh, go through and check your cavities and make sure that um, they're all free of bilge water. That's what those little caps are. Of course, the little black areas are your step zones when you're walking on it. Good to know information. Here's another little bit of information. You'll notice that there's no autopilot, and I haven't hidden anything in the um, in the panel that activates any autopilots. But if you know your keyboard controls, you can actually um, activate autopilot from uh, hitting Z and Control Z, Z Control Z, and you've locked your altitude. It's now on. You, I've just done it on the keyboard can't see it and if you do control H that'll lock your heading so now your heading is locked straight ahead the uh, autopilot does that little turn in flight simulator when it activates whenever it comes online it um, kind of turns like that so it's autopilot is now on and if you hit Z key again Z is your autopilot on off so if you hit that again you hear that beep and you know the autopilot's off so if you if you like to look around and you're enjoying the sights and you want autopilot on you just uh, hit the Z key and then control Z and control H and you've locked your heading and you've locked your altitude and to turn it back off off then you um, just hit Z key again it's also good for uh, trimming off trimming up your aircraft if you don't if you're lazy and don't want to trim your plane then you just um, hit Z key and control Z control H and that'll trim you up and get you flying straight it's kind of good to know 
Um, that pretty much does it. That's the uh, Super Pacer Super Pack. Piper Pacer Super Pack. And that concludes the walkthrough on this video. So, hope you enjoyed it. There's quite a few airplanes, isn't there? Yeah, I really went crazy on this one. So, hope you enjoyed it. It's good to know all the little details of aircraft that you might be buying. It's good to know where the switches are. I, I've always wanted to do these tutorial movies. They, they show you like how everything functions and where the little neat special effect tricks are and what the planes look like in Flight Simulator. So this gives you a pretty good idea of um, this entire package. Not just like one plane or how to do an ILS landing, but everything. So sorry the video takes so long. There's so many details. I tried to go as fast as I could. And uh, anyway, hope that uh, pretty much shows you everything and hope you enjoyed it. Everyone have fun flying. Take care. Bye.